Okay, you got 16 to go. Oh. <laughs> Five, any good? Island. Oh, flyer! Yeah, team. Okay. Good morning, fish people. I'm Alan Norris from Fish on TV. It is Sunday, the 16th of January, and me and Dave should have been fishing in the fifth round of the Feeder Master pairs. Unfortunately, it's froze over. So we've come to Hayfield Lakes, and we're going to fish a carper qualifier. As you've probably seen, I've drawn peg 55. Everybody's going flyer, flyer, flyer. But I have fished up there before and all the fish came from sort of, I think I'll get one or two. Um, I'm not sure whether it's a qualifying peg. The fish seem to be in the middle of the, just off the island. They seem to be around sort of 57, 58, 59, 60 up to 60 uh, there's a chance i might get a few but i just think they're a bit further up dave wood's drawn 52 he's not happy because he thinks he's definitely off the fish he's not happy he's got the margie look margie face i'm not bothered i just love it i just love being here let's hope there's a few fish there's half a chance i might get one or two let's just hope that i mean there's the quality of anglers that's here i just want somebody to get it all wrong and push out fish my way but we'll see i think it's a straightforward uh, match for me. I'll probably set the waggler up, the method and the bomb. It's that clear and I'm not even going to bother with pole. I've brought some ground bait and stuff. In fact, I've got loads of gear in there. I set up for two matches. I set it up for the winter pairs and for here just in case. So it'll probably be waggler, but I don't think, I know Cleggy is absolutely shit hot on the waggler and he said he wasted two or three hours on the waggler on island and ended up catching on bomb. But he was in like sort of the peg 58. I think, I think that's where he was. It was it, 58 is bang on the fish. They just seem to be in a big ball there at a minute. So there we go, folks. I think I'm just off the fish. I think I should get one or two. Whether it's a match winning peg, I'm not so sure. But we'll see. The fish, they can move like this. Might be my day. They might be just there. But we'll see. We'll do as best. See if we can get qualified. Get to be peg. Because it, it is some ice knocking about. Um, let me get ready. So we'll see you on the bank. You didn't you feed? Well, we're all in. First cast for Andy at side of me. And uh, he's gone round and it's certainly not a stocky. I think like I was saying earlier, I think from what they've been telling me and from what I experienced a few weeks ago, that's a nice one. He's got a good five or six, maybe six, seven pounder actually. So what? Can't quite tell. It's a decent fish anyway. Probably about seven, maybe, maybe eight. Um, that's his first cast out and it's gone round. A dead simple plant for me, it's just an hybrid feeder. And um, bomber pellet, bomber corn, searching about. That seems to be the way that they've caught. I know Steve Clegg, who's he's fished in this area for and he spent hours, like I think I mentioned it earlier, not waggling, didn't get anything, and the last couple of hours he's been bagging on pellet. Uh, sorry, corn, sorry, just on the bomb. So it's clear as the water. I've not set the pole up. No intention of setting pole up. I can hear lions from the zoo, actually. Um, and I think we're just off the fish. Having said that, I have had a liner. Um, and Andy's just, uh, just had one. Interesting to see how he's catching. And it's a pellet feeder with quite a long hook length. It looks about eight to 10 inch long. So there you go, and he's not got that tucked in neither, like most people do. So he's fishing on the distance of where my, oh there we go, a big liner, you can see that, nice liner. So, that tells me there's something just in front of it, I've got to tell you now, of course, the way I'm facing like this, it looks like I should be casting there. <laughs> there's nothing got to cast here, more to your right. So where Dave is, I mean, Dave Wood's down from me. He's what, one, two, three pegs down from me. He looks miles away. Well, he's got the corner of the island, so 
which suggests everything's left to right to cast, So, which I'm more than happy with because hopefully that puts me closer to where the fish are. The fish have been in that area over there, so we shall see just off the fish. I've had a liner. It looks like there's one or two knocking about. Let's hope we get one or two. All right, folks, there's one or two liners. So I've just come 10 meters shorter and two minutes, 40 seconds in, it's gone round. I don't think it's the biggest, but at least it's a start. And Simon to my left, he's had one as well on bomb. I'm on method. And I'm just priming about 16 meters, I'd say, in front of me for the bomb line, which I'm going to put to I've heard they've been catching on corn. So I'll, uh, I'll try that a little bit later on. See if I can pick one or two fish up. I know Andy Kinders have one or two. Let's see if we can get this one in. stockies a couple of pound or so that'll do nice one nice little couple of pounder little miracle we'll take those excellent stuff right Again, I've got uh, micros, two mil micros, a little boiler cr bit of boiler crushed ground bait in it. That's an amazing smell. It's a bag and baits one. And not a lot on the feeder, keeping it as low as possible. There we go, you can just see the little yellow chocolate ring is chocolate yellow. Let's clean it off. We'll get back out there. See if we can get another one. It's deep out there. It's just settled, so it's deep. I know as you go towards the island, it does, it is shallow, because when I was fishing on the pegs opposite, it wasn't taking that long to drop. I was probably about eight meters off the island. It's definitely shallower there. And I had quite a few fish from the other side casting towards that island, from the tip of the island. But that has got to be twice as deep there. Right, let's hope that goes round again. In two and a half minutes, that'd be lovely. Lovely jubbly. Right then, folks. We're all set. The trap is set. Bit of patience. And I'm not firing loads of pellets in. I'm probably putting four or five in. Pellets, they're just not, they just seem to, they've got a mind of their own. They just seem to spread. I'm not too worried about that though. Just to create a bit of noise. And I do know that the catch up between 13 and 16 metres on that bomb line. But that's the only area I'm going to feed. I'm not going to feed any anywhere else. There's one or two being caught to me right down there as well, so it'd be nice to get a few of those stockies and hopefully one or two of the original. Right, I, I might have mentioned it in the previous, oh no I didn't actually because we didn't have a bite, I didn't do a video. In the Carp League, I mentioned it last year, in the Carp League there's one qualifier for this lake that goes through to the final and Adams is in as well, so one from each lake. Apparently there's a couple of 
tags on this lake because of the ice that's in with Adams. I think it's these guys at the bottom. So there's two qualifiers to go through to the final after today, which is held in March. Don't know exact date, but uh, it's something that they've been doing for a while here at Hayfield, and it's uh, it's quite a good competition. There's always plenty of anglers here, quality anglers. So that's what we're trying to do today. We're trying to qualify for the final. What can happen is it's like an old Andy Kinder's qualified and one or two others. You have got to fish six matches. So let's say Andy Kinder won it and, and I came second, for example, I'd go through because he's already in the final. So that can happen as well. So there you go, folks. That's the cap qualifier at Hayfield Lakes, the cracking league. Um, and this is my second match. I think there's about 10 after this, so I've got to fish at least four more and hopefully on one of those try and get through to the final. So there we go. We'll start to give you a little bit of info on that one. And it's been in five minutes and I've not had a bite or a line. All right, two hourly update, folks. I've only had that one fish. Simon's had three to my left and he's only had that one fish. It's quite a bit bigger than mine. Peg 62 again is producing fish and Andy, I think he's getting quite a few on the waggler now he's, he's getting, getting on the waggler Andy Kinder's had about five I think the guy up at him he's had one I think I've just seen Robin get one but um, Simon's had three altogether just, he's just been fishing bomb um, and I don't think Dave's had a bite yet but I'm not getting any lines or anything I've had a look on the bomb line, a quick look, and no signs there. It's apparent that they are up there to the right slightly, which is what we all thought. And that's why they've pegged it like they've pegged it, to give us half a chance of maybe getting one or two fish in this area. But, hmm, bites down here are a bit of a premium. So, just keep plodding, keep finding a few pellets in now and again. Just keep searching the peg and just see see if we can pick one or two up. There we go. Not looking great, folks. Well, folks, it's taken a while and no fish down this end. I mean, Simon's had four. Andy's not had one since that, right at the beginning. Dave's still not had one. Peg 62 still catching. I've gone over where my pellets were. Not a sign. So I've just chucked quite a bit further out with the bomb. One and a half minutes in it's gone round. So, brilliant. Dave's neck must be killing him. <laughs> He's been giving me some stick on his channel, I don't know he has. So we can keep it on. It feels like one of those stockies. Peg 62, he can't stop catching. Hey? Soft rod. <laughs> it is. I think it's on here stocky. Oh, I hope it isn't. I hope it's massive, but I don't think it is. It wasn't even supposed to rain today, but it is, folks. And it's bloody freezing now. Wind in your face. That's nothing new for Nosha. He's kiting over to the left. Come on, sunshine. This one on corn, folks. It's definitely a stock in this, but it is a soft rod. It's the Matrix Horizon Carp Feeder. It's got to be a little in that way, it's darting about. Oh, not as small as I thought. It's quite a bit bigger than I thought that. Come 
Come here, you bloody thing. Bloody thing. This time, sunshine. Look at him, he's darting everywhere. There we go, we've got him. We've got him, folks, we've got him. Yes, get him at last. It's been pointless down here for a, for a few hours, but there we go. About three and a half pound, I reckon. He put a mighty bad look, didn't he? <laughs> right. Here we go, folks. Let's get back in. Right then, folks. Dave Woods had his first fish. And I've just upped into another one. Six minutes in on the corn. He's just had a beauty as day for about eight pound or so. Now this feels like a better fish, I think. I'm not sure. They just don't seem to be darting about as much. Let's hope it's a decent size, but Peg 62's not catching as prolific, but he's, he's still getting one or two. I think he's the winner today, with the look of it. I best not mention that Dave crossed over lines with Simon, did I? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a clip of it on my phone. Dave's got cross lines with, with Simon. His first fish of the day. Go on, Dave. What, has he got it? Oh, no, he's just, just come out of the landing net. He's a nice one though. Nice fish. This time, he's got it this time. Oh, it's a beauty as well. Well done, Dave. Bigger than my two fish put together, that. these from an area where I've put no feed whatsoever so and I don't seem like they're wanting a lot of snap which is normal in winter and what I have put in I've not put a lot in <laughs> they're, they're giving Andy some sticks saying hey get in that cake <laughs> oh, mate, this is only my third if we get it in folks This is one of the originals, not a stocky. Certainly feels a better stamp. Oh, it's going from side to side quite a bit. Come on, Mr. Fish. Fairly close, and it's that deep is this lake. Nowhere near. Come on, son. We can get him up a little bit. Oh, I've just felt it flick round his fin. Oh, he's swum straight into the net, and he's a beauty checking him in the net. Yes, we'll have that. Oh, yes. That's a nice one. We like those. We, uh, look at that. He's got to be... He's got to be about eight or nine pound. We'll get him in there. Oh. Mm, this is a beauty. But a little beauty. It's a hippo. Well, not had a bite for a while. Took the clip off and went as far as I dare, because you can only go halfway, or not, certainly not past it, and 
three and a half minutes in, it's gone round on the uh, little hybrid feeder. Well, actually, it's the new Preston Duro banjo feeder. It looks like an hybrid feeder. They do the same job. Nice will be fourth fish. But again, 62. Well, he's into another. Every time I look up, 62's in. And they were telling me that he qualified off peg 62 as well when he drew it. So it seems to be the informed peg does. Uh, sorry about that, folks. It cut off, but I didn't get it in. I know Dave just videoed it because he's uh, he's not else to do. <laughs> so I might be able to get a clip off him if I ask him nicely. He'll probably say no to start with. I'll talk him round. To talk him. Now, it's the last hour. I've just seen him chuck out on the method. And look, look at him. He's talking right nice and softly to the camera. Now, last hour, Alan's got three at the moment. Lad next door's got four, but he's got a massive ghoster. But if this is a decent fish for Alan, he could be pushing it. And... Uh, I think there's enough time to get him another one, yeah, it's half past two. So we won't be finishing till quarter past three. But for me at the moment, terrible. But I've just seen him chuck out on the old method feeder. And it seems to have gone round for him. Let's just see who oh, he's taking his time with this. Nets out now. Here's your commentary on this one. The mightiest fisherman of them all. Rod's coming up now as it's getting closer. Oh, we nearly gonna have a stab at it then, but it didn't bother. Here we go. To the left now, he's pulling it back round. Come on. It, oh, it's a big one and all, I think. Go on, mighty! There he is, look. Happy, happy as Lara. He loves it, doesn't he? So that's another one. It were about three or four pounds. We'll put three on. That gives me eight. I've got eighteen to twenty pound. Um, peg sixty-two is. He's got to have at least three times that. Um, Andy Kinder's on end peg over there. Pretty much not fat. Is the opposite him? I can't make out whether he's opposite him or opposite sixty-two or not. He's opposite him or Steve Cook. Andy's had a few. He's doing all right on Lake, so. But I don't know on the guy in Peg, what am I on 50, what was it, 55, 56, I think he's on 59, not sure, I'm not sure what number, I might be wrong when I'm saying 62, it might be 61, I'm not sure that the guy's catching up. Um, the guy next to him, he's had, he's had a few fish as well. Um, I don't know how the section runs, but I don't know, I think I need a few more fish to have a chance in my section. But there we go, back out on the hybrid stoke, stroke, Juro Banjo Feeder, but it looks nothing like a Juro Banjo Feeder now, it's the new ones that Preston do, I like them, they're nice, better flight, they don't wobble all over the place when you cast them, so uh, there we go, that's your update, one hour to go I think, oh no, 45 minutes to go, so desperately need a few more fish. Let's hope it happens, eh? <laughs> I just stuck into another one. Well, what was that after about four and a half, four and a half minutes? David Wood's not happy. I'll let you guess what first were. Well, it was four. Something sake, he's just said when he saw me with this on. <laughs> just start laughing, bless him. <laughs> 
Oh dear, he's giving me some jit, bless him. Let's see if we can get it in, folks. Nice, lovely, nice steady bite as well. Oh, hey, oh, he's, he's wanting to go, look. What's happening? What's going off there? Come on, fishy. Come on, the caps. Right, here we go. He's coming in. Slowly but surely. Another one about three or four pounds. I think it's those stockies that uh, Robin and Noli have put in. Nice fish, but a decent scrap up, I'll tell you. Go on to the top. Come on, son. There we go. That'll do nicely, folks. That'll do nicely. <laughs> Well hooked these fish today. Get in a little beauty, common carp. I'm gonna put that down as four pound. It might be a little bit more. So over 20 pounds. A lot better than last time. Never had a bite off peg 68, I think it was, or whatever it was last time. There were four of us all up that top end. Never had a bite. Well, at least I've had a few today anyway, folks. Right, time to get chucked back in. Don't like how that wafter sat there like that. Spun round the hook a little bit. Right, a little bit of squidgery do. Not saying that this is the key, but <laughs> since I've stopped putting it in, I have been getting one or two. And it's just settled. There we go. There we go, folks. I'll just keep tightening that up as it goes. Put the timer on. And we're away back fishing again. Right, over and out. Right, half an hour to go, folks. Didn't have a bite on the last cast. Um, I've just gone over with the uh, little hybrid feeder over the pellets that I've been feeding intermittently throughout the day just to have a quick look. I've not had a bite on bomb there but you've just got to keep having a look. They could just rock up, you never know. I've been saying peg 62. I can't see all pegs but I think it's, it's either 59 or 60 that the guy's catching from. Oh, I thought he went into another, he must have just lost that one. He had one on a second ago. So, uh, 
just a couple of pegs down from, I'm sure it was peg 62 that were catching that day, all day. But they do seem to be in that area, and they've been there for quite a few weeks now, so. Just so I'll give you a little update. All the pegs, all the guys that have been pegged out down the bottom there to the left hand side, they're all packing up. I don't think any of them's had a bite. I've just seen a guy take his keeping out, no fish in it. So they do seem to be up here. That's where all the fish are. So if you do want to come to Afield Lakes, get on sort of 58 to 62, those, those kind of areas, and 10 to 13. They seem to be the areas where the fish are at the minute. Or if you've got a match, you know you've drawn in a good area. Um, you're probably wondering why I'm not, you're allowed to use pole, but it's that clear. Nobody's opted to use the pole. Everybody's on either waggler or method or bomb. So there we go, half an hour to go. We shall probably see you at the weigh-in. We'll see how we've gone on. We're all weighed in. Uh, it is a few days after. I did a little bit of, uh, I had a bit of a chat with Dave in in this van, just for a bit of fun, explaining why we were actually at uh, Hayfield Lakes. I did try mentioning it during that uh, van chat, as we we call it, the van chat. It seems quite popular. But he muscled in. He says I talk a lot. Good grief! You know, just he, he talks a lot more than me. You know, he can't wait. I might start getting grumpy and angry like he does. <laughs> right. Peg, I forgot what peg number I drew. Peg 55 I drew and got handed to me right on peg 56. I got Simon two pegs down on 53 and, and Woody on peg 52. He got the chuck to the island. I tell you what, it looks weird that because everything is like that. When I first chucked down, <laughs> I'll show you, you can't cast them. It's straight in front of me. No, that way. So I was glad actually because it was a little bit nearer the fish. I think I mentioned earlier that everybody's shouting flyer, flyer, flyer. I do know, you people. I do know those fish seem to have been balled up for quite a while now. In the, I kept saying 62, I, I've not counted properly, I think it was peg 59 or 60. And there seemed to be between sort of 58 and 62, and the, they seemed to be in that little area and the same pegs opposite. So, sort of, is it 8 and 10, 8, 10, 12 round that sort of area? So, like Dave were in 14 week before, I were in 55 that week. We're just off the fish, I think. Uh, it's fairly clear, is the, is the water, so. I, don't, I didn't see anybody using a pole, which they normally would do, but it's that clear as the water. It's people are tending not to pole fish. They're going for the the bomb tactics, the method feeder stroke, hybrid feeder, stroke duro banjo feeder, whichever feeder you do fancy using. Uh, and pellet waggler. And um, peg 59, I think it was. I've just looked for the results on, on my phone. And for some reason, I, can't, I can find all the other results, but I can't find that one. But I don't know the guy that I said was bagging all the time. He had 113 pounds, and I'm sorry I can't remember your name, but uh, well done, pal. What a mighty fisherman you are. You showed us the way home that day. So well done. Andy Kinder opposite him, 
I think was in second place with about 50 pounds and I think third was about 30 I think, Rob, I think it was Robin actually Robin Goffith yeah I think he I think he was third off memory with about 30 something pounds and then there were a few sections around about 30 pounds I would just I would just missed out on time I have 27 pounds for my five fish dead simple match kept it patient had a few liners early doors and no liners whatsoever and then out of the blue I just got a bite or two to my delight and not so much to David's delight <laughs> I don't tell you what he was saying but he wasn't talking politely every time I hooked into one because two of the fish came within about five or ten minutes but we had a bit of a laugh I've got a bit of footage of him when he did eventually hook into a fish crossing lines with Simon next door that was funny <laughs> and he knows our video in him <laughs> well, you've got to laugh Dave haven't you if it's just not quite going you can't get more you've got to laugh and we had a bit of a laugh so enjoyable day all around um, I can't really say it's a learning curve for a match at the minute because at the <laughs> winter you're either on the fish <laughs> or you're not it's as simple as that um, they do tend to ball up uh, anybody will tell you that they're not excuses the guys down to us left I think out of the four anglers that were down there I think they were one fish caught and everybody else blanked so just to give you an idea they do seem to be up that end and uh, one or two of the fish that came out weren't the stockies I had a few of the nice ones as well so that was good to see so yeah enjoying the league I think that was my second match, I can't remember, it was second or my third, I can't remember, you've got to have six matches, I'm hoping to try and get there this weekend, I have to have a nice little word with the missus, because I'm hoping to fish the Golden Rod on Saturday as well at Hallcroft, ta-da, <laughs> Hallcroft Fishery, I will get used to that place, god damn place, but I have had some nice car there, I'm saying them to other matches, so you never know, if you drop in the, again, if you drop on the fish, a chance I think the uh, peg 52 on the bridge produce 170 pounds they seem to be in that area um, and that's what happens like I said earlier in winter you can drop on them you have a great chance of having a great day and I'm looking forward to it so I'll be having a quick chat with Dave um, either before or after that match so I look forward to seeing you then folks, don't forget if you do enjoy my videos it's absolutely free to subscribe, if you click the notification bell you will get all our videos as we upload them, and a thumbs up, it would be very very nice. So until the golden rod, I'm not sure whether this video will go on before or after, but anyway, on Saturday the 22nd I am fishing the, of January, I am fishing the golden rod qualifier at all craft fishing, so I don't know when I'm going to put this on. I have to mention it so until then take care folks and don't forget fish up So they do seem to be up here. That's where all the fish are. So if you do want to come to fish the lakes, get on sort of 58 to 62, though, the, those kind of areas, or 10 to 13. They seem to be the areas where the fish are.
Right, the fisher people, we're all weighed in. Uh, it is a few days after. I did a little bit of, uh, I had a bit of a chat with Dave in, in this van, just for a bit of fun, explaining why we were actually at uh, Hayfield Lakes. I did try mentioning it during that uh, van chat, as we, we call it, the van chat. Seems quite popular. But he muscled in, he says, I talk a lot. Good grief. You noticed he, he talks a lot more than me, now he can't wait. I might start getting grumpy and angry like he does. <laughs> right. Peg, I forgot what peg number I drew. Peg 55 I drew and got handed to me right on peg 56. I got Simon two pegs down on 53 and, and Woody on peg 52. It got the chuck to the island. I tell you what, it looks weird that because everything is like that. When I first chucked out, <laughs> I'll show you, can't cast the other thing. It's straight in front of me. No, that way. So I was glad actually because it was a little bit nearer the fish. I think I mentioned earlier that everybody's shouting flyer, flyer, flyer. I do know, you people. I do know those fish seem to have been balled up for quite a while now in the i kept saying 62 I, i've not counted properly i think it will pick 59 or 60. and there seem to be between sort of 58 and 62 when they, they seem to be in that little area and the same pegs opposite so sort of is it 8 and 10 8 10 12 round that sort of area so like dave were in 14 week before i were in 55 that way we're just off the fish i think uh it's fairly clear is the is the water so there's, I, don't, I didn't see anybody using a pole, which they normally would do, but it's that clear as the water. It's people are tending not to pole fish. They're going for the the bomb tactics, the method feeder, stroke hybrid feeder, stroke Joro banjo feeder, whichever feeder you do fancy using. Uh, and pellet waggler. And um, peg 59, I think it was. I've just looked for the results on, on my phone. For some reason, I can't I can find all the other results, but I can't find that one. But I don't know the guy that I said was bagging all the time. He had 113 pounds, and I'm sorry I can't remember your name, but uh, well done, pal. What a mighty fisherman you are. You showed us the way home that day. So well done. Andy Kinder opposite him, I think was in second place with about 50 pounds. And I think third was about 30, I think, Rob, I think it was Robin actually. Robin got for, th yeah, I think, he, I think he was third, off memory, with about 30 something pounds. And then there were a few sections around about thirty pounds. I would just, I would just missed out on time. I have twenty-seven pounds for my five fish. Dead simple match. Kept it patient. Had a few liners early doors, then no liners whatsoever. And then, out of the blue, I just got a bite or two. To my delight, and not so much to David's delight. <laughs> I don't tell you what he was saying, but he wasn't talking politely every time I hooked into him because two of the fish came within about five or ten minutes. But we had a bit of a laugh. I've got a bit of footage of him when he did eventually hook into a fish, crossing lines with Simon next door. That was funny. <laughs> and he knows our video in him. <laughs> uh, you've got to laugh, Dave, haven't you? If it's just not quite going, you can't get mongy. You've got to laugh. And we had a bit of a laugh, so enjoyable day all around. Um, I can't really say it's a learning curve for a match at the minute because at the winter you're either on the fish or you're not. It's as simple as that. Um, they do tend to ball up. Uh, anybody will tell you that. They're not excuses. The guys down to us left, I think, out of the four anglers that were down there, I think there were one fish caught and everybody else blanked. So, just to give you an idea, they do seem to be up that end. Um, one or two of the fish that came out weren't the stockies, I had a few of the nice ones as well, so that was good to see. So yeah, enjoying the league. I think that was my second match, I can't remember, it was second or my third, I can't remember, you got to have six matches. I'm hoping to try and get there this weekend. I have to have a nice little word with the missus, because I'm hoping to fish the Golden Rod on Saturday as well at Hallcroft. Ta-da! <laughs> Hallcroft Fishery! I will get used to that place! That damn place! But I have had some nice cat there, haven't I, in them silver matches, so you never know, we're dropping the, again, if you drop on the fish, you have a chance, I think the uh, peg 52 on the bridge, produced £170, 
they seem to be in that area. Um, and that's what happens, like I said earlier, in winter. If you drop on them, you have a great chance of having a great day. Dave, Dave, we upload them and a thumbs up it <laughs> would be very very nice so until the golden rod i'm not sure whether this video will go on before or after but anyway on saturday the 22nd i am fishing the of january i am fishing the golden rod qualifier at Allcroft fisheries so i don't know when eddie will put this on but i had to mention it so until then take care folks and don't forget fish on